Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I am persuaded that nothing can separate us from the love of God. So at the end of Romans chapter 8, verses 33 to 39, is a pretty extensive list of things that are claimed not to separate us from the love of God. And it's great that the list is thorough and tells you so many things and you can identify on that list that those things do not separate you from the love of God. But I think a lot of times what happens is that we don't see the trees for the forest, so to speak. We don't see the individual components because of the whole entire onslaught of too much information at one time and don't ever consider what's really being said there, which takes uh, the, the need to actually stop and think about what's being said and look at the individual components that are part of the thing. So we're seeing the big picture, but not the individual details. And it's important to see some of these individual details here and to do a little exercise where we actually kind of dig deeper into the meaning of what's being said here than our usual glossing over and seeing the forest and not the trees. So we'll start by reading the whole entire section from verses 33 to 39 and then go through with a quick verse by verse investigation and then finish with a quick exercise of individual components. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So going through verse by verse, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. So the answer is nobody, because God's not laying charge to, to us. He's justifying. He's doing the opposite. Who is he that condemns? And it says, it is Christ that died, yea, rather it is risen again, who also makes intercession for us. So again, the answer is nobody condemns, because Christ is making intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Verse 37. No! None of those things are going to separate us from the love of Christ. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. He's at such a loss to explain how much these things are irrelevant and completely conquered, completely defeated, completely that we have victory over it. He can't even describe it better than just say we're more than conquerors. Well, the, the conquerors rule everything. That's, that's the victor. That's the winner. That's who's in charge. That's who's running the show. And you're more than conquerors in all those things. Through him that loved us, which is Christ. And nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, which is his love for us, not ours for him. That's agape. Agape love is also commonly described in many places as the love of God. So nothing can separate us from the love he has for us. None of this. Distress can't separate you. Persecution can't separate you. Peril, sword can't separate you. We're more than conquerors over all those things because he loves us with perfect love. Verse 38, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not conditional. It is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, let's go through to finish up 
and just kind of single out a couple things here to meditate on what it's actually saying here about what can actually not separate us from the love of God. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I am persuaded that not even life shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not even life can separate us from the love of God. So that's, you know, have you, have you really stopped and thought about it just like that? Not even life is able to separate us from the love of God. One more to consider on your own. <clears throat> 